Here at Chonilla.com, we like to cuss. And if you don't want your kids to hear it, then listen to us when they're not around. But if you don't mind your kids listening to grown folks talk, then turn this shit up and let the show begin. Hello, this is Amber from Black, Sexy, Geeky, and Mental. And you're listening to Chonilla. I can't get enough. I want more and more and more. It's the Rapping Bible. There was talk everywhere. Then the man said, and the light was there. He said, I done good. There's no doubt. On the seventh day, he just chilled out. Genesis, Genesis, beginning of death, beginning of death. Finally, the good book is back, and his word is nasty. Check it out, there's town called Sodom and Gomorrah. Everybody party like no tomorrow. God looked down and said, I'm a bum. Don't look back or you'll turn to soul. My wife took a peek, started to freeze. Cal came up and licked her cheek. Take a lick, y'all, of a cheek, y'all. Take a lick, y'all, of a cheek, y'all. Imagine cheek, y'all. all the psalms, all the parables, every sacred biblical word. Interpreted by the finest sucker MCs of all time. For real? We totally call them sucker MCs. You're better MCs. than all history blood. So Noah built his up in his wife through a fish. She said, all these animals smell like... Fish? <laughs> That's the first thing that came to mind. <laughs> You're listening to... Chonilla. 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 You know, Shirley... Would it be too crazy to say that Method Man is the most talented member of the Wu Tang? Um, from what I know so far. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I feel so removed from hip hop, man. Why? I I just been out of it, really. Yeah. Yeah, I need some major, major hip hop update education. Some catch up. Yeah, I need some major hip hop catch up. So. Hopefully, we can invite back the Where's My 40 Acres crew and they can, like, <laughs> feed us some what to do. Yeah, see who's hot. Yeah. 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 Speaking of being farly removed from hip-hop, you are hanging out at Chonilla.com. I'm Clove. And I am Charlie. And it is Sunday, June 14th, 2015 at 12, 17 p.m. In the motherfucking Eastern Time. That is correct. Telephysia. Telephysia. Is it a noun? Yes, it is. It is a noun. <laughs> can you can you give me an example of a phrase? Can we do that? Is that how it works in spelling bee? Yeah, that would be, yeah, yeah. That would be too many clues, though. Really? Mm. Aww. Mm-hmm. But it's good. No, I think that would be fun. You know what? Because I could be way but off. You're not, but you're not trying to spell it. You're trying to know what the word means. Oh. You can't give me a phrase, ex- like an example of a phrase? I had one, but I deleted it. Aww. Because it's not a spelling bee. Mm. <laughs> so what are you thinking? Tele, tele, telephysia. Thesia. Mm-hmm. I don't know what tele means. Does tele means transmitting? So get, like you have to. I'm just gonna go ahead and you tell you. You have to give. You have to say. Hold it's, on. You have to say. Close. You have you're to close. say. You're getting close. <clears throat> you have to say that you're numb. Telephysia. <laughs> It is sensation or perception received at a distance without the normal operation of the recognized sense organs. Huh? Yeah. I, you lost me. So it's kind of like, I guess, communicating from a distance without being able to speak or see or anything like that. Like aliens. Yeah, exactly like aliens. Yes, that's what it is. It's alien talk. Telethesia. Telethesia. Can you give, oh, you don't have that phrase. I don't. Damn. I'll make sure to get one from now on though. Yeah, you should. Mm -hmm. Because then it, it's a good indicator that mm-hmm. maybe I might use the word for something what's and sound super smart. And what's going on with Patreon? Patreon, Patreon. Thank you, Patreon. Mm-hmm. We got two new ones. We shout out to Jaquetta. And again, I'm going off the top of my head because my, my PC is, my laptop's going super slow. You're going off the dome. I'm going off the dome. Um, and James? Yes, mm-hmm. James. Oh, yep. my God, I got it. 
it. <laughs> <laughs> so shout out to James. Thank you. Thanks a lot, guys. For your patron, your patronage. Yeah, I want to give a shout out to all our patrons and, right now. Yes, and again to Jaquetta. Check out her podcast. Hey, you know it. Mm-hmm. So uh, we've got a lot of contributing patrons uh, this month, and I uh, just want to say what's up to you and, and thank you to Chris, James, Leslie, Jaquetta, Joanna, Maxim, and Angela. Thanks a lot, guys. You guys are uh, single-handedly uh, making Chonella the best that it can be. Yes. Thank you very much. Yes. And mm-hmm. uh, soon I'm just going to go through it, and uh, I know there are some T-shirts that are oh, that are owed to be sent. Oh, yeah? We're still on a backlog of those? I thought we were all I think caught maybe up. Maybe one person. Okay, we'll we'll talk about it. Afterwards. I'm gonna check that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so shout out. Uh, thank you so much for your support. You have no idea. Uh, it helps us grow. Um, and hope and he hit our milestone. I think our first one we're trying to hit is to well, we're gonna, for a laptop. Let's, no, no. Let, let's let's talk about the milestones another time because we're gonna like uh, reorganize things a little bit. Uh, okay. Yeah, because we're right. still loading. So mm-hmm. and and for the Patreons, uh, please uh, thank you and um, we appreciate your patience and that your emails is being loaded up with updates. That's okay. With that's okay. That's what they're paying <laughs> with for. The archives that's, that's loading what they're up. They're paying so. for Shirley. <laughs> so. Yeah, so it's a woohoo! <laughs> more, more, more Chonilla, more Chonilla. So, are you able to share where to find us? Yes, okay. if you go to the easiest way, really, just go to chonilla.com. And uh, when you are on the website, you will see uh, where it says become a patron. Or, uh, and the cool thing that you've added where it's an easy way now mm-hmm. for people to find the Facebook group, the forum. Mm-hmm. So if you click that, that's another way where you can participate. But yeah, chonilla.com uh, and then Patreon, become a patron is the easiest way to uh, to join, to pledge. Yes. Mm-hmm. Think it's awesome. Yeah. All yeah. right. So mm-hmm. <laughs> I was on the Facebook group and I saw that there was the clan had started sending out these flyers in this neighborhood, but they actually had a toll free number on there. Okay. Like a support line. <laughs> so I decided to call. You did? <laughs> I did. When? <laughs> Let me see. I'm going to play it back. I played, I uh, called Saturday. It oh, was yesterday. Hold on. Before you play, uh, we got the little ones. Okay. Hold on a second. Come here, girls. Come on. What's going on? More Father's Day stuff. That's great, guys. Happy Father's Day. Let me see. Open it up. Oh, my goodness. This is a big card. Read it. I will read it. It says dead. Dead. All right. Let's see. Dad on Father's Day. I'd like to share a few little thoughts with you. Let's see. Lita T and Mom, I love you. <laughs> you are valuable. We love you so much. You mean the world to all of us. I love you. Happy Father's Day. She raises all the eyes. That was great. (laughs) And the little thoughts say. Two. Number one. Number one. You're the greatest. Number two. Thanks for everything. Number three. I'm so lucky you're my dad. (laughs) Number four. Number four. I love you. That is so great, girls. Thank you so much. Big hugs. (laughs) Thanks, girls. Yes. It's Father's Day spice. Okay, come on upstairs. Chef, this is a chef. Yes, I used to have a mustache. Yeah. Right. Thanks, girls. And did did you put all this stuff away? <laughs> Slip in the parenting. <laughs> all this stuff in the bag. Yeah. Okay. Good job. So what I did is I called. The clan hotline you for did? some support. Yes. <laughs> I needed some serious support. <laughs> <laughs> I got their answering machine. So uh, I'm going to play it for y'all. Thank you for calling the traditionalist American Knights of the Ku Klux Klan. We are unapologetically committed to the interests and values of the white race. We are determined to maintain and enrich our cultural and racial heritage. White people will simply not buy the equality propaganda anymore and have begun to doubt some of the anti-Klan hysteria that they have been fed in school and from TV and movies. The traditionalist American Knights of the Ku Klux Klan is simply a movement of white people for the highest standards of Western Christian civilization. If you'd like an information packet sent to you, press 1. For media inquiries, press 2. 
If you would like a representative of the TAK to call you back, press 3. To check the status of your application, press 4. Thank you for calling. Yeah. Call back. Yeah. So what I got from this message was that they are, you know, definitely a victim of, uh, you know, hate propaganda against what they actually stand for. Mm-hmm. You're just scared because you're about to, <laughs> the shit's about to go down. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's, we're so going to bring you back to everybody's reality. So crazy. <laughs> right? Wow. Man. Anyways, <sighs> what are you saying, Shirley? What, where, where, what part of, what state? I don't want the specific, mm. but what state did you call? Uh, it's nationwide. The oh. 1-800 number. This is a national, uh, national group. Oh, mm -hmm. gotcha, gotcha, mm -hmm. gotcha. Okay. <laughs> okay. So how was your week? It was, uh, it was all right. I mean, it was kind of stressful, but you know, it's, it's, it's good stress. From yeah. Work, so yeah. It's a healthy stress, I should say. Yeah. Yeah. How about you? It's been, it's been okay. It's almost the, well, this is the last week for school for mm -hmm. the high school kids. Mm -hmm. So uh, Ronan's last day was Friday. I'm looking forward to that. And then this week was, uh, this week is, the, are the girls and theirs will be, uh, I think Tuesday. Tuesday, Tuesday, I believe, is their last day. So okay. so I'm kind of – I'm excited about that because I don't have to do the whole back and forth, back and forth. Right. Um, but now it's going to – but then it's going to be like a new plan of like, okay, now the kids are home all day. <laughs> what am I going to do? Wait. All day. All day. <laughs> and how am I going to balance like working from home yeah. and then them – at home. You're going to have to set some clear boundaries with the kids. Yeah. Right? Like when you're working, that they either go play in the room or, you know, you get, you're just going to have to set something up where they understand that you need time to be able to concentrate. For sure. For sure. Because then uh, that's what I'll say. I need time to concentrate or no my little ponies. Yeah. Forget it. Yeah. No more. Yeah. No more YouTubes. Say goodbye to my little ponies. Because how are we going to pay the bills so you can see, watch YouTube? Yeah. How are we going to get the internet? Right. You can't. So... I'm gonna, I think I'm going to yeah. use that. That's good. That's their currency, My Little Pony. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, so it was um, it was a little bit on the slow side. Productive-wise with my work, I feel like it's not fully there because mm -hmm. of just, you know, finalizing school and everything. Right. Plus my, you know, last week my yeah. brother was here, came to visit us with his mm -hmm. fiance. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Yes, with fiance, Kelsey is a fiance. I know, right? I know. <laughs> and then my mom was here, and my yeah. mom was behaving. Yes, she's getting better and better. You know, she's being calm. She's Get, being you know, calm. Give her a minute, though. You know what I mean? Like she, she'll ramp up into it. You yeah, know, and she knows. Like, like I told her last, our last conversation or our last kerfuffle, yeah. really. Yeah. Um. You know, so she knows. You get on my nerves. I'm gonna tell you to go home. Mm. <laughs> it's like okay. Good for you. Yeah, yeah. Good for you. We have, you know, she is aware that me and her cannot be in the same roof for too long. I can't believe I didn't, uh, I totally forgot about this. What? Was the, like this whole week has been like a self kind of exploration. You know what I mean? It's been kind of like looking into like uh, my, my childhood. Yeah. And, uh, oh, yes. How things are uh, like uh, translating from childhood trauma to adult life. Right. Because you are reading John Bradshaw's Homecoming. Homecoming. Oh, my God. That book's a trip, oh, right? Wow. I'm still not finished. I still have well, to get We're at the same to... place. We're at the same place. Yeah. I totally understand why you took a pause. I totally get it. You get it? Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> Because you're about to jump in. Oh, yeah. And, and it feels like I'm about to jump in. Yeah. You know? And it's and like mind wise, you have to be. I. It's like, um, well, I don't think I've ever cried as much in my entire life for like, you know, consecutive days. For real? Yeah. 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 Just like, just, just tears, just like welling up, just like, you know, cause you read parts of the book, right? And you, and he, the way he breaks it down is he breaks it down in ways that make you understand where the dysfunction is fueled from. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because a lot of times you, you ask yourself like, where Where's this coming from? What's happening here? Why Why am I reluctant to... Why am I feeling this way all of a sudden? Right. So... so What's one, happening? One of the realizations I had was when you look at... Like, when I look at somebody public speaking, it's... You know what? It's... I, I can't... My empathy goes through the roof and I'm just like, I can't do this. I yeah. Can't, I can't watch this guy. Like, especially if they're doing poorly. 
Like when I see a comedian bomb, it's like, oh, you get me go out up of here. In stage and... No, no, I just, I just want to run away. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, it's like the, the anxiety that they're feeling. I think I start feeling it. Huh? And I don't know. I, you know what I mean? I don't know like how that. I'm so directly Super. connected to that. Yeah, yeah. But man, it's like, um, it, it's it's a trip, man. Going through this book, it's a real trip. So, what have you learned so far? Um, or is this too personal to? Well, I, I guess some of the, the big things that I've learned is that even though that I sat there and said, like, you know what? Yeah, okay, my dad was an alcoholic. Yeah, okay, my mom had mental illness. Sure, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, it's 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 no big deal. That's their problem, not mine. Well, guess what? <laughs> it's kind of my problem as well. You know what I mean? Well, like, yeah. Like, it's, it's they like, put that problem yeah, on you. It's like being coded. Like, there's one it, – yeah, it's like wearing this coat of armor that was built just for because of those. You know what I mean? And now this this armor is so thick that you're like encumbered from it. You know what I mean? Like you're you you have trouble in your day to day, and that's that's kind of the reason why. But but it's 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 a lot deeper than that. Like I'm kind of glossing over it because I don't want to start bawling my eyes out right now. Oh okay. But it's <laughs> that's the feeling, right? That's yeah. the feeling that that I understand that there's a connection to some of the behavior that I don't like versus some of the behavior that that. Um, some of the behavior that I do like. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. It's one thing I, I remember about the book well, from so far from reading the book too, is that um, I, I didn't realize as well that there's certain triggers that you don't know, you right. know, like that right. it, it helps you kind of start noticing these kind of triggers that you weren't aware sometimes right. Right. that were hitting you. Yeah. And, you help and me. then you're like, Sorry, you feel anxiety of you out of nowhere, and you're like, "Why am I feeling like this? I right. shouldn't feel like this. This right. makes no sense." Exactly. And it could have been, and it makes you angry. What well, makes me angry? Yeah. You know what I mean, when I get like, uh, when I can't control how the anxiety is going, mm -hmm. it definitely gets me to a point where I, I get frustrated, I get angry. But you made it help me make a connection this morning about like the public speaking thing. Oh. And what was that? Do you remember what you said about that? Right. Um, because you you were talking about, you know, feeling valued, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. how your parents and growing up and your family overall yes. growing up yes. can make you feel valuable. Yes. Um, uh, that you were like in the way and things yeah. like that. Their so, dysfunction didn't allow them to be able to place any value on anyone. Right. You know what I mean? So I was saying to you, maybe that's why you have a fear of public speaking because this is a moment, but... Uh, elevated times 10 or 100 mm -hmm. that people are taking a moment to watch you and listen to you and value what you're about to say. Right. And that makes you probably really nervous. Bananas. Yeah. And it's not one person. You're doing it exponentially with, mm -hmm. you know, how many, depending on how many people there are in in mm -hmm. that room. And mm -hmm. usually from the stuff that you do for your work or others or even teaching, it's you know, it's quite a few, not quite a few, a lot of people. Yeah. So I can understand. So I was saying maybe that's why you get nervous is because, yeah, the, it's the people are sitting down and listening to you and they're going to value what you're saying and that and you're not used to that. Ooh, girl. Yeah. It is a trip. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a journey that uh, that I'm. it's sweet and sour. You know what I mean? Like there's 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 revelations that are very good. But there is revelations that also make me realize a lot of stuff that I don't like so much. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I hear you. Uh -huh. On this comedy note. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what else? We, oh, we watched an amazing documentary. I've been wanting to watch it. And I'm so glad that it's on Netflix, Little White Lies. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> What a trip. You got to check that out. Ooh. So I, I had like, hold on. Well, we're about to spoil the shit out of it right now. So. Uh... <laughs> no, no, no. Well. Uh, That's okay. I want to talk about it. I want to play the trailer okay. for it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Okay. Well, you start talking and I'll uh, queue up the trailer for it. Okay. So basically. Play... Oh, so, you know, it's funny. When I was thinking about it, you know that song, Little Einstein? We're going on a trip. And I, I don't know, for this movie, I thought, I wrote down, we're going on a trip in Lita, Latiz's rocket ship flying through your brain. Little white lies. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Girl, you're so crazy. Um, okay, so here's the trailer. Okay. 
I come from a long line of New York Jews. I grew up in a world with synagogue, Hebrew school, bar mitzvahs. So it never occurred to me that I was passing. I wasn't pretending to be something I wasn't. I actually grew up believing I was white. <laughs> really, girl? <laughs> Show us how you can stand on your side. Oh, that's terrific. How do you do that? We lived almost picture-perfect kind of life for a while. So when Lacey decided she was going to tell the story, I was a little nervous about it. If you look too closely at it, it didn't make any sense. So we found ways to see what we wanted to believe. I always looked at you like you looked black. To me, you're just like a Jewish kid who, I don't know. White people will think anything, <laughs> crazy things. I'll know white people for a long time. <laughs> today, today, that was we the funniest statement of the whole really documentary. Power yeah. denial. How the hell did anybody sort of not acknowledge this? It just seems like the 600 pound gorilla in the room to kind of just refuse to see it. When it came time to apply to college, I had to check a box. The only box I had ever known was white, so I just didn't check anything. And based off a photograph, I was admitted to college as a black student. And I was afraid of not being a part of the world that I had grown up in anymore. If I could have done my life differently, there were a lot of things I would have done differently, but in the end, not really. You know, the fact is, the Shrug. fact is that whatever happened with you and daddy and that inability to talk about things, that is what I carry on. Nobody talked about everything because it was all secrets. Look at it. Oh, the body language is just killing me. <laughs> Little white lies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, I felt so bad for her, man. Not because, you know, of her situation, but because her pursuit was met with such, like, um, resistance. Yeah. You know what I mean? From the people around her. And it's just because they didn't know. You know what I mean? Like, like I get that part that they didn't know. But when but they do, knew. But when do you How do can better? You not right? know. Exactly. There's a point, I think, these, the her parents, you get to a point in your life where you know that when you know better, you do better. Mm -hmm. Right? But these guys just want to pretend like they don't know better. And they put their friends and their family in that situation, too, like oh, to so pretend sad. to... Yeah. To, to, to keep the lie like they didn't tell them to do it but they obviously everybody like she said like one of the friends the 6,000 or 600 pound you know what I mean and 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 that was not cool too to kind of like you know it's like that scene from um oh what's that movie with Jim Carrey is like wow oh I me mean, myself and Irene right, right? You know? <laughs> so wow, wow. <laughs> You know, I, I noticed that the water just kind of beads off his hair a little uh, bit. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe they wrote that line. <laughs> so crazy. Yeah. And how can, uh, poor thing, like mm -hmm. that, that until she dated a guy who was biracial, yeah. who was like, are you serious? Are you kidding me? <laughs> like, you see that guy that is invited to your family functions? That's your dad. Right. Like her boyfriend yeah. then. Her, the her ex-boyfriend. The man she had an affair with on her husband, on her white husband. Yeah. The black man she had an affair with. She would invite him to the family functions. How that selfish is that? Yeah. That was like. It's so selfish. That was tripping me out. Yeah. And the whole family was like, mm -hmm, shrug. Yeah. Around family yeah, and everything. Not, my problem. not just like them, but around the whole, like cousins and that aunts and every, like. Yeah. And then her mom, and that the excuse, me, oh my the excuse, God. they're Sicilian. The Sicilian blood. <laughs> I saw, oh, the grandfathers. I was like, your grand, that's, there's some black in there too. Yeah. Stop lying, yeah. dad. But I felt so, in the end, I felt really bad for her father. Mm -hmm. Like the mm -hmm. one who raised her. Oh my God. Cause he, he saw because that shame. Day. Cause yeah. And the whole time until this day, there's never been an admission of an affair. Yeah, never never exactly. has his ex-wife said, like, yeah, you know, I slept with this black guy while we were together. Yeah. So bananas. Just before we got. Oh. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> yes, you got to put it on your list. It's a trip. Oh, she goodness. made me think of that girl that I went to uh, junior high school with, and she looked exactly like her, mm-hmm. even lighter. Mm-hmm. And uh, and that she was like, I was like, there's something about you yeah. that's different. Yeah, like you, there's something about you. I'm like, you're what? You sure you're white? Yeah. She'd be like, why are you talking, tripping out like that? Like, why are you saying stuff like this? I was yeah. like, I don't know. There was a scene. In- I don't know. Until the end of the year, mm-hmm. the the very last day of the year, she, she's like, I want to show you something. Mm-hmm. And then she showed me a picture of her family. And then you see her family is just like a, a, like a rainbow of different, you know, like are clearly black. You know what I mean? Like, you know, one side of her family is black. The other side is finally white, but like really mixed, a huge mixture. So I was like, wow. Many many shades. Many shades. And she just was passing off white. Jeebus. Yeah. she made Jeebus Christo. Yeah. She was trying to pass off white. Trying to pass off white? Or was she raised white? Do you know what I mean? Like, Like, is that the deal? Is that the... I don't know. Okay. I don't know. We mm. never really talked about it, but when she showed me the picture, I was like, "I knew it." Fucking the systemic racism is bullshit. Man. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, and especially back then, I it could, ruins people's lives. I could see too why she did that because of the way things were in mm. Montreal. Plus, it was private school. It was private school. She found a path of least resistance. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Damn. Mm-hmm. Oh, was that the girl that was uh, that was uh, sniffing the, the liquid paper? Or no, no, that no, no, that was some Haitian fool. <laughs> China. I was like, oh, she pissed me off. Yeah. Till this day. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Can you? Hey, Speaking, give us a feedback. I, I'd like to know if you had a chance to see the movie. Give yes. us a call one eight four four Chonilla. That's one eight four four two four six six four five five. Or send us uh, an email feedback at chonilla dot com. Mm-hmm. Speaking of being racially confused, yeah. Let's take a break, sweetie. Okay. Hey, what up? It's your boy Dino Red from the Red Rock Podcast Network, and you're listening to Chonilla dot com with. Clove Roy and Shirley Joseph, you better tell some motherfucking body that Tonella is. The Shiznit. Hey guys, we really hope you enjoy listening to the Chonilla podcast as much as we love making it for you. But the reality is, the lion's share of our time is dedicated to our day jobs so we can cover all our costs of maintaining the podcast we've hardly reached our full potential. The good news is we can work together to change this. With the help of Patreon.com's crowdfunding, you can become an active contributor to our crowdfunding initiative. Let us know that our ongoing milestones for the Chonilla Network mean as much to you as they do to us. Head over to Chonilla.com, click on Patreon, and help us make the Chonilla Network the best that it can be. All right, we're back. All right, we are back. <laughs> I wanted to say to oh, you know what? What this week, our son had his first teen birthday party. I uh, know, right? <sighs> I had to really fight as a mother not to like. Oh, let me go get you. <laughs> and he's got he was surra- he was surrounded by girls too, right? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. He went to. Uh, he got uh, a friend who's a girl, mm-hmm. a, a, pres- a video game present, mm-hmm. and then he went all the way to Toys R Us early in the morning to get her gift all by himself. I know. <laughs> City bus. <laughs> oh, so now the gates are open. I'm like, you know what's going to happen, right? He's going to be like, all right, I'm going to head over to Toys R Us. It's a newfound freedom now. Or, all right, I'm mm-hmm. heading to the mall because the mall is like nearby. That's why it's... That much more important to get him that monthly pass on the metro. So he's got that freedom to go where he needs to go. True. Mm-hmm. Explore the city. Oh. Come on, everybody. I'm not ready. It was really hard. You know, and you're like, I'm going to give him my phone. You're like, surely he's going to be fine. Mm. I was like, no, but what if what if he's, you know. Evil wants to know if, uh, if anyone was a no-show, if I would have sent them an invoice. A what? <laughs> <laughs> He thought, it was, he thought it was a party for Ronan. <laughs> they do they grow do. Up fast, They man. do, Quentin Pop. All right. I got some uh, some big ups. You do. 
This is the part of the show where I like to butcher people's Twitter handles. <laughs> <laughs> Say big up to some Twitter followers. Hardcore Gamer at Gamers Court. Rachel McShane at McShane Rachel. Kadri- Kadrina Braxton at Miss Surge to the Top. Gary Cooper Su- Gary Cooper Sperber at Gary C. Cooper. Javanna Jones at Javanna underscore Jones. Asia at Sokijulimisa. <laughs> Yell.buzz at Yell.buzz. FYC Podcast at FYC Podcast. Nene Lannister at A Sarcastic Nerd. Eric Braxton at Braxtonell. Ladybug STL, I guess that's St. Louis, mm. at Ladybug. Scott Hamrick at Shamrick808. Shamrick0808. Uh, Carol Parker at Miss Honeyflower C. That's uh, T. Lynn's mom. Nice. Big ups. Uh, Cindy Beersack at Cindy Beersack. And uh, Bob Melnick, which is my uncle, Uncle Bob, at uh, B. Melnick 1202. What? Yeah. Uh, life, life as, life as Cabria at Life as Cabria. Joe Davey at uh, Jolie, Jolice Davey. Le Nuovo Condo at Lueno or Lu Le Nuovo Condo. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for fucking me on with fucking with me on Twitter, guys. Appreciate it very much. Big ups to you. So, what have you learned on the Facebook page lately? Mm, let's go check that out. All right, I uh, I learned that the uh, I learned about the Charleston, uh, South Carolina church massacre. Very, uh, very, very sad. That was rough, man. And supposedly his. Um, I saw the, the pictures too. You know uh, I mean, I saw the pictures of the people who were who were killed. Yeah, one and, of them was um, the senator and the pastor of the church. And they look like they look like every person you would see mm-hmm. at a church. Mm-hmm. You know I mean? and, and it's scary like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Supposedly, there's a manifesto that came out. Yeah. But I don't know if it came out yesterday or today. It came out recently. um, But the manifesto was about him needing to balance things out. Right. Yeah, racially. Right. Because he he felt an imbalance somehow. Which is really Mm -hmm. messed up. And then, but what, what the timing of it is of him coming out while he's captured, that's what's making it weird. So, it's, and he did like there's a, questioning. Well, for me, is he is he doing this on his own? Was he trying to prove something to a group of people by doing something it's like probably this? Probably a combination of that. I mean, he, he, there's a website that kind of broke down the chron- chronology before the massacre, mm-hmm. and um, you can see that this uh, this uh, roof kid was on a tour. You know what I mean? On a exploration of finding out his white roots. Right. You know what I mean? And clearly with his like additional mental illness to the mix that it's like, it's, it's, you could see that, that this is, uh, it's, it's, it's scary because you, you could see also the judge was defending his behavior. You know what I mean? The judge was not, was saying like, we need to be understanding. Oh, right. To not just the vic- the family's victim. Or, the, or the, 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 victims. the victim's family, I mean, but also but the to family be understanding of the perpetrator, to, yeah, right? Yeah, like of it, him, of yeah, it, his family as well. It definitely surfaces a lot of raci- racism across the board. You know what I mean? Like it, it's it's not just like a massacre that happened as one incident. It's 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 a it's an explosion, yeah, of what's been going on. Yeah, yeah. There's a cool article on uh, Mike Six Facts Every One needs to know to understand the Charleston shooting. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but some of the fix, six facts was that the uh, Emmanuel AME uh, uh, church is no ordinary house of worship. Martin Luther King's been there. Um, there's, yeah, this was a big deal church. Like this yeah. was a, a church that had Historical a lot of roots church. with, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so between 1834 when black churches were banned and 1865, congregants uh, continued to hold services in secret or underground, and I believe this church was part of that as well. 
the number two, the Confederate flag still flies in that state, in the state capitol. Yeah, that's there. crazy. That is so crazy, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> Evo says that that judge, uh, he's not going to be presiding over the trial. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Because that, that, that right there, there was a bias, you know what I mean, that he had declared. Mm, wow. Mm, mm. Evil says, wasn't part of it because a girl he liked two years ago started dating a black guy? Don't Who know knows? about that, but th- that could definitely be something that would inspire, uh, you know, a crazy racist. Right. And then uh, it says Charleston was also a major slave trading center before the Civil War. And it's yeah. funny in this manifesto, big he was roots. trying to big roots he was in the trying slave. to say it's not a racial thing or and then he talked about Trayvon Martin and how he didn't understand and, mm-hmm. and things like that. Um, and then number four was there are no statewide hate crime laws in South Carolina. Mm-hmm. That's been it. Wow. And number five, number five, the law center to uh, prevent gun violence gives the state an F on gun laws because supposedly he got that's another arrested, thing I wanted to talk about, yeah, but wasn't charged. So because he wasn't charged, that's what allowed him to po- to have uh, to gain a gun. Yeah, which is crazy because here, no, it don't matter. You yeah. have a record, period. Mm-hmm. You can't. You can't. Yeah, right. It's super it's strict happening. here. It's like that in the U.S. too. If you're a felon, you can't own a gun. Right. Period. Right. Uh, and then number six was Walt. Uh, what was it Walt? Walter Scott was shot in the back and killed by a police officer in North Charleston. That Jesus. was a, yeah. But sorry, what were you saying? You want to talk about the arrest because he was arrested, but not a felon. Right. So so Obama made a statement. Yeah, you know I mean, and he clearly said that this is a person that should that clearly wanted to inflict harm on people. Mm. And if a person clearly wants to inflict harm on people, how does he have a gun? Even in the sight of this tragedy, mm-hmm. there still there still seems to be a disconnect on how brutal brutal this was. Mm. And the reason I say that is because there the there's a guy named Rick Perry in the United States, and he's a GOP uh, presidential candidate. And he used this, he used this incident to tell people not to vote for Obama because he wants to take guns away from Americans. Are you fucking serious? Right. But Obama said, Obama said that this is a person who wanted to inflict harm on someone who had easy access to a gun. Okay. That's clearly saying, that's clearly saying that, that there needs to be a screening process. Right. Right. To find out if this person has any ill will towards anybody. Right. There was evidence of him having ill will and, and weird behavior. Yeah. But it was turned into a political agenda. That's... It was turned into, you know, we need to arm ourselves. We need to make sure that Obama doesn't take our guns away. It was so selfish and so shameless. And it was put on a platform as though it was legitimate. And that made me realize that there's such a disconnect between the people who are endangered and the people who aren't endangered from this kind of tragedy. Mm-hmm. It's insane. It is insane. This clearly states that I'm shocked. Lala, I, I'm... Lala said that this is the first morning she's woken up not oh. crying over this tragedy. I'm in shock by all of this. Yeah. With everything that's happening, I feel for you. The opportunism behind it, like the the ability America. to say that, you know, oh, I'm going to use this to to get myself elected. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Mm-mm. I don't know what's going on, but it's like there's a sense of backwardness, you know, like mm-hmm. is that human behavior that we have to take a few steps back to finally move a little bit more forward? Is that what happens when you move forward and it's always like two steps back? Because what do you mean? 2015 i would have never thought to see what you see today in the news between the police shooting which yes it's something as a community as a black community it was something that everybody knew Mm -hmm. that that it was regular to happen it happens Mm -hmm. but to now you know you it was at the at the time something you'd hear about right Mm -hmm. a friend of a friend or you go to the barbershop did you hear about this this person and how this person's son got shot or whatever. Right. And to actually see it and now on a day to day Mm -hmm. in the news and how it's, it, 
Uh, actually, this freezer right there. Actually, thank you, buddy. Hironi, come back when you're done, okay? <laughs> Just come back, come back, come back. And then, but, but, and then now this, yeah. right? It's yeah. like all of this. It's like a, a, we're a young person like that, 21 years old. What the fuck was he thinking? <laughs> you know what I mean? I know. That, and that's why I'm suspecting, was this a group thing that maybe he was pressured to do this? I just think he's crazy. Trying to prove something. I just think he's untreated. I don't know. He's, he's clearly mentally ill. Like, this is fucking crazy. And then, yeah, it's, it feels like it's like it's, it's, and, and the, yeah, like J James saying race war, mm -hmm. you know, it's it, coming, man. It is coming. There's, there's no, it, it's almost like the momentum on it is so, it, it has a velocity right now. That's, that's scaring the shit out of me. Mm. You know I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then to find out that uh, the white people in uh, Topeka, Kansas were finding KKK flyers on their their porches or you know like basically saying like hey exploiting we're here taking advantage we're here if yeah. you want some more info yeah let us know yeah yeah taking mm. advantage using fear with everything that you see in the media mm. and things like and, and things of that nature yeah oh wow mm -mm -mm. oh lala says and his roommate knew about this i hope he gets charged too mm. wow hmm and he, uh, may they rest in peace. Yeah. Very, very sad what happened. Mm. You know, when I heard about it, I was like, I was scared. I really was. My first thought was, don't let this be a trend. Don't let this be a, a trend. I remember that's, seeing. That's the first thought. But it is, though. I remember seeing movies like Mississippi Burning. You know what I mean? And you, you would see where churches would get bombed all yeah. the time. They'd get the yeah. Molotov cocktails thrown to the window, whatever. Yeah. I mean, there was definitely, like, any type of gathering of black people was met with yeah. assaults yeah. and violence and terror and, and sociopaths. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? This kid is a, is a terrorizing sociopath. Mm -hmm. Who has his facts completely off and wrong, right? And like, like the rest of white America. Right. Right. Like the rest of the white power structure. Listen, white people. The, you're, you're, it's, it's not to put white people down that all of this is happening, that this is, this is a moment of reality. This is a moment for everyone to communicate to, and, and to say, look, we're not taking crazy pills as a minority. Or a person of color. I hate saying minority. As a that non, bugs the shit out of me. As a person who is viewed as non-white. Yeah, as a non-white person. Someone who is outside the power structure. And that's what we're. And that's what this is. This is a wake-up call for white people to say, you know what? Get out. Get out of your fucking comfort zone. Wake the fuck up. Take off your 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 little comfort filter and realize, as a fucking person here, and I'm a fucking person, that guess what? Things are advent and advantageous to you. And I'm trying to, and, and as a person of color, that's what's going on for me. That, that you, have, you have a privilege and fucking recognize it and quit pretending the shit ain't happening. Mm -hmm. That's it's what this is. You. It's, it's all, all around you. you. There's like, there's, there's people screaming at the tops of their lungs, trying to get heard, trying to get balanced. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So more, more, more. And, and and that's why there's a responsibility for the media to just the way that, like I, 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 I say, it's so important that more white people who are awakened to talk about this, to do something about it, to, to educate your fellow white men and women yeah. to say like, no. They're not taking crazy pills. They are right. And it's not about being awakened. It's about not dismissing somebody's claim. Right. So quickly because. It's not meant to attack you. It's not to attack you or make you feel bad. Right. Or make you feel guilty. Right. It's not your fault. Right. Your ancestors set some shit up in yes. order for this, for things to be advantageous to you. Yeah. And we're trying, and and the our countries are yes. built on in North America. Our countries are built on theft. Yeah, our countries are built on taking. Crime. Our countries are built yeah. on exploitation. 
Our countries are built on 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 the slavery. Our countries are built on all these things that have benefited light skin since since the the colonization. Yeah, to the point that it's trickled all over the world, all over. Yeah, you look in Japan, you look in India, that the people who are lighter, and that's what makes you think is that it's was it. It's clearly says, uh, something. Yes. You know what I mean? It clearly says something. Mm-hmm. Is it an in- innate? Is is it like a guttural thing? Do you know what I mean? Like an instinctual thing? Because as, you know, before even, I'm sure even uh, human beings uh, really traveled and were within their own tribe, that, that the person who was lighter was seen as as a uh, richer you, you can't say that who knows i don't know you can't say that because we've had al- albinism yes you know i mean which true. is which has been seen as a curse true, Do you true. Know what I mean? it's clearly this it's, is set up by a power structure the, yes it's yeah and 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 i agree with you on that it's clearly like it's trickled all over the world which is really fucked up it's mental it's it's really messed up and and so <sighs> And this is where education comes from, where more that more white people have this educate your kids to say, no, it's not meant to make you feel bad. Not trying to say that you're guilty. Mm -hmm. It's we're not saying it's your fault. We're just saying, wait the fuck up. Yeah. Yeah, Look around you. There's something here that you're benefiting from that I'm that I can't benefit from. Yeah. When I heard comments, I've heard comments from. I don't understand where there there's a need to have a black magazine. Right. I was like, what? Yeah. Are you serious right now? Yeah. Like, (laughs) really? Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Ah. And I don't know if it's because I'm it's because I'm getting old, but but it definitely feels like. you're in that position of saying like the world is turning to shit. You know what I mean? Right. Like everything that's going on right now is, is it's upside down. Yeah. It's, you've got a, you know, a whole demographic of people screaming. Mm -hmm. Uh, Lala said, apparently he also has a manifesto. I, I don't even want to read it. Einstein said that James said, Einstein said that, world won't be destroyed by evil but the ones who sit and do nothing that is correct totally agree mm-hmm. and uh evil says go watch hotel rwanda yeah i remember that that's with uh, don Cheadle, and that's where they uh, the, to- the to tootsies the world, yeah. and the uh yeah. i can't remember what the other one uh the other uh major tribe was but it all had to do with light skin and dark skin and yeah that, and that was imposed in a in a place in africa you know what I mean? And and good point. Uh, Evo said once ca- colonization of the world started, this image of lighter is better took hold. Yes, and remember, history is written by the victors. Very true. That is correct. Very true. So, <sighs> anyways, I would like to take a break. Yeah. Because the rest of the stuff I learned on Facebook. Oh uh, yes. It's a little bit lighter, um, and I just want to kind of like uh, recalibrate for that because this this massacre is uh, definitely something that that everybody everybody should worry about. Right. This, this was done by, okay, this is, you know, when you hear about like, um, okay, when we heard about 9-11, right? We hear about these people that are so committed to their um, understanding of how wrong things are, mm-hmm. even though it's misguided and even though it's been, it's been fostered and even though it's been like, uh, it's been, um, uh, it's been taught to them, mm-hmm. people's lives are at stake. Yeah. And this is that thing. This is that thing where there, there's a whole bunch of stuff there involved, like the, you know, like you, the 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 websites that are dedicated towards you know the, the misinterpretation of the clan and that the clan is actually a good place and that the clan is actually a good a, a good source of uh, wanting to protect people's like identities and stuff like that. White identities. When the, when those things are talking to people who are delusional and talking to people who are are scared, talking to people who are are not in the right mindset. Right. Danger is afoot. Hmm. Mm-hmm. 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 All right. Okay, let's take a break. Yeah. Hey, guys. We really hope you enjoy listening to the Chonilla podcast as much as we love making it for you. But the reality is the lion's share of our time is dedicated to our day job so we can cover all our costs of maintaining the podcast. We've hardly reached our full potential. The good news is we can work together to change this. With the help of Patreon.com's crowdfunding, you can become an active contributor to our crowdfunding initiative. 
Let us know that our ongoing milestones for the Chonilla Network mean as much to you as they do to us. All right. On a lighter note. Mm-hmm. It's a little poof. Little poof. Mm-mm-mm. Okay, so what else did you learn about? I learned that uh, on Facebook. I learned that uh, you can uh, you can pick locks with a handy kit that you can buy online. What? Mm-hmm. It's like this little kit that you can buy with a bunch of tumbler locks on it, and you can just like pick them, and it comes with a little booklet. <laughs> how to yeah. pick a lock? How to pick locks? Hmm. Um, I would have uh, probably buy something like that as a teenager <laughs> to tell you the truth. I would have done it too. I think I'm, I'm thinking of buying it now. <laughs> um, citizen. Citizenship and Immigration Minister Chris Alexander okay. uh, kind of looks like Mark Hamill. And uh, he also thinks that citizenship is somehow a privilege, not a right. Is this Canadian? This is Canadian. This is that. Uh, bill, oh, that dude, that Bill C-24. Bill C-24, which says that if you are caught uh, with an offense outside of your country as dual citizens, like if you have dual citizenship right. and you're, you're caught doing something. Mm-hmm. Outside of the country, right. then they have the right to cancel your citizenship. Too sweet. And then supposedly too that if you are, if your parents are not born in Canada, and you are of this a descendant, you may be considered a second class citizen, like a dual. I citizen. may be considered a second class citizen. That's so crazy. So anytime they can revoke. If you know those things, it affects more people with dual citizenship, like well, you said. They're claiming that, you, but they would have to prove. That I can you fall into crime. that, yeah. Ugh, which I is mean, bull fucking shit. It is so crazy, and which is so arrogant too, because it's like, well, how far back does this go? Because then technically, every fucking body in 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 Canada then is a second class citizen. Yeah, yeah. Ever since 1972. Yeah. 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 Mm. All right. I heard, um, I found out that Obama will be on Mark Maron's uh, WTF podcast. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. So I think it's going to be tomorrow at 10 p.m. if you want to go check that out. Um, I also learned that Lobster. (laughs) James, I come to America. (laughs) Lobster is going to be on the McDonald's menu nationwide. (laughs) Huh? There's going to be a lobster sandwich. Oh. On the McDonald's menu nationwide. Yeah. Ooh, I don't Mm. think I'm going to touch that. Yeah, we're gonna we're going to make the lobster extinct with all this globalization and demand for lobster sandwiches in I, McDonald's. It's so funny because I just saw a picture of somebody like, uh, oh look, a twenty year old lobster, and look at the size of it, right? Mm-hmm. Like, wow! And I thought that's sad because that's exactly the size a fucking lobster is supposed to get to. <laughs> but we've been fishing so much, we don't allow them to get that big. Mm. A lot of things in the ocean is supposed to be big. Okay. Like real big. Uh Uh-huh. But we fuck shit up as human beings. Okay. Plus I don't, you know. Plus there's the whole evolution thing. Right. Right. That too. (laughs) (laughs) I found out that Sarah Palin is officially 10 times smarter than Obama. Oh, God. Mm. I What? (laughs) Mm -hmm. I also found out that Dominicans really... Really, really don't like Haitians. Really don't like yeah, Haitians. Yeah, they're, they're they're thinking of like I think out of twenty thousand um, Haitian Dominicans, mm-hmm. only three hundred of them will have official uh, um, citizenship <laughs> in the Dominican Republic, and the rest will be more likely deported. So they'll be um, they'll have nothing. Mm-hmm. They won't be accepted in Haiti. And they can't be in Dominican uh, Republic, which wow. is really, I don't know what the fuck, like the hate that D- that Dominican Republic has with Haiti and yeah. the v- vice versa. This shit's got to stop. Yeah. Hey, New Jersey, beware of team building exercises because you can lose one of your balls. Oh, by the way, I'm not going to Dominican Republic until that shit is ended. Yeah. As, no, I cannot. I cannot. It's out my list. I'm not considering to ever go. Ain't going to play Sun City? Nope. Good for you. I also found out that White Rachel sued Howard University for, for racial discrimination back in uh, 2002. Okay. <laughs> was, was it because the... she was pregnant and shit? Is that true? Like, I don't know what it was no, about again. I don't know. The details, but. But, but that was the headline. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was not. Well, no, it wasn't. Okay. But it was my take on the headline. 
but she sued for racial discrimination. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and it, it started to make me think, like, does white Rachel... Does she, I like <laughs> is she like constantly you like trying on, to on try Chernilla? new stuff? You know what I mean? Like, is she yeah. like, you know, like, hey, I should try suing for racial discrimination. Let's see if that happens. Right. Yeah. Delusional. This lady is delusional. Yeah. And and I've seen some like, oh, the whole, t- the, there's been a lot of questions in different groups about like, uh, you know, being uh, transracial and oh, like, uh, like, uh, is is that okay and things like that and I I I'm like there's a possibility but the problem is is that Rachel here is not a good example of that Mm-mm. she is a con artist mm-hmm. nice. she's conning like con artist. yeah she's a con artist she's covering her ass I'm telling you one of these universities there's going to be a new story uh, break with mm-hmm. this woman mm-hmm. that's that they're going to sue her for something right I think she's just covering her ass. She's so knee deep in it that she's just lying and conning by making making the media believe that she really thinks that she's a black woman. Mm-hmm. I think it's total bullshit. And there's going to be a lot of universities that are going to be after her. Watch, watch. Okay. So Cho Jones predictability. <laughs> Do you want me to play the Cho Jones? No, no. Are you sure? <laughs> yes. I believe. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Give it a minute. Absorb it. Be one with the prediction, Shirley. It may not be Howard University, but there will be a controversy in court with white Rachel Dolezal. And all will come out that she just had to stick to telling people that she believes she's a black woman. Because she may have gone for some loans as a black woman that she wasn't supposed to (laughs) she may have been accepted to certain or getting some uh what's it called uh sponsorship or or those kind of things you know what do they call it when you go to college on a i can't think of the word right now you go to college (laughs) yeah what is it called i don't know why the word is escaping me Ah. it's like not coming out but we get scholarship. Scholarship, thank yes. you. Yes, yeah, she did. She did have scholarships. She did apply for scholarships as a black woman. Oh, that's why we called her Soul Man in real life. Now, yeah, she she may get charged if someone is dedicated She's enough go as a lawyer. They may dig that shit up. You want to know something? Find a loophole. This kind of fraud. Find a law this and kind... charge her for fraud. Yes, and she's gonna go to jail. Then what happens? <laughs> She's going to get punched in the face by the black girls and punched in the face by the white girls. Yeah. Orange will not be the new black for her. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I'm Cho Jones. And that's been your prediction. Yes. Very cool. All right. I want to say what's up to uh, the new members of the Chinola Forum. Oh. Yeah. We got some new members. Uh, LaShonda from Fort Worth, Texas. We got TG a God's Gift, Elaine T., Ivan from Montreal, Quebec, and Karen E., uh, Yolanda M., Derek from Sacramento, California, Latasha B., Ebony H., Sumiko from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Ricky L. H., and Shannon W. Welcome to the group, guys. I wanted to say shout out to our top interactors from our at Chonilla Twitter account, um, which would be Callie Winter, The Shiznit. Uh, Justice Devante, Erica Blaze. I don't know why the word name Devante always cracks me up. Dark Stork, James Campbell, shout out. Uh, Stomp and Shout 14, Jacques Family, Mr. Player Hater, I'm in on air. Salut, bonjour, uh, at your trash. Uh, Liz Lagunson, Wisdom and Wit, and at Kelly. Lie 1974. Shout out. Thank you so much for your retweets and interacting, being, again, our top interactors. I have a question for you. I didn't do it. If White Rachel wrote a book, would you read it? No. I would. No. I totally would. Because I'm not... Con- I would have read it if if truly none of this whole scholarship and, and, and Howard University, none of it, if it was truly like... I truly believe that I am a black woman trapped in a white man's white woman's body. And here's the reason why I think this. What if 
This book was not written by her, but a biographer. Nope. I'd read it. No. Why? I'd totally read it. Why? Because I'd want to find out where this is coming from. Where where? How did she get so lost? How did she? Get, Every time you have an interview point... with her, it's never fucking clear. She don't exactly. even. She can't exactly. even define. A biographer could clear that she up. She can't even define as to why she thinks that. Mm. As to why she's been behaved. I'm telling you, it reeks of a con artist. She is a con artist. Yes, agreed. hundred percent. She found a path. She's like, oh, snap, this is working. People think I'm black. Mm -hmm. I, oh, I could get these scholarships. Oh, I could do this and stuff like that. And it could have started as simple like, I love black people. <laughs> I love all things black. I love the hair. I love, I love the black music. culture. We're so boring as white people. Oh my gosh, I can't. That's it. I'm just going to embrace the culture. I'm going to trick everybody. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Anywho. All right, do we have any news? <laughs> pa pa Pudding Pop said, no, I wouldn't support her fuckery. Mm. I think we've covered, we pretty much talked about the news. Yeah? Yeah. That's all of that? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you know what time it is? Yeah, no. Bond yes, no. no. No, no, two, one, no. Yeah! It's time for Bible's Comes Tonight, the two, one, no, Charlie. Woo! It's been a while. We are going to get into the book of Joshua tonight. Last time, I think we were in the book of Deuteronomy, which is book five. Sweet. We found out that, that's right, Evo, it's turn up time <laughs> we found out that Moses was getting ready to die so oh, yeah. he had to name his successor which it is again Joshua it's Joshua yes, his, his little cabana boy Joshua he was a cabana boy he was his, his personal assistant wearing little short shorts he was making hi meetings. Moses how you doing what's up he was uh, setting, anything? Yeah, he was making uh, uh, scheduling meetings for him and uh, the DOD. Okay, so uh, Moses, yes. uh, so I got the message, the voice of mail from DOD, and yes. he said that he'd like to meet you at the top of this hill right there. Don't worry, I will. It's Joshua's fault. It's Joshua's fault, and the party was going. He didn't tell the people. What are you doing? Right. I think that's <laughs> Joshua the douchebag. <laughs> All right, I call this episode, I Got You, Boo. <laughs> and the players tonight are Joshua God, Rahab, a couple of spies, oh. and the King of Jericho. Nice. All right. So um, in the, the first chapter of the book of Joshua, um, once Moses had died, the people of Israel were kind of left with no one that had a direct hotline to the big guy. So God decided to put Moses' personal assistant, Joshua, in charge so that Joshua can finally lead all the Israelites into the promised land. So Moses is dead at this Moses point. Moses is no more. Oh. Mm -hmm. Don't know if he went to heaven or not. There was no mention of that. Well, they said he can't go to the promised land. He could not promise promised land. Oh, he won't see the promised land. He'll never, ever get even close to the promised land. Right. Mm, yeah, he's not going to see shit. Right. Well, he did see it once because God said, hey, tell you what, <laughs> go to the top of the mountain. Take a look. Here's but a you can only peek. look. Yeah. Right, right. Here's you can't be in it. Yeah. Here's the trailer right. to the promised land. No spoiler alerts for you. Right. right. So, um, but the thing is, God starts macking on Joshua a little bit. What? Yeah. He's like, yeah. He's like, don't worry about anything, Josh. <laughs> I'm going to give you everything that I promised Moses. Pretty much anywhere you walk, I'll give it to you. <laughs> All the way from Lebanon, including the great Euphrates River. And the entire Hittite country, pushing all the way to the Western Mediterranean Sea. Mm. Basically, everything I promised Moses. And uh, don't worry, baby. I'll never leave you. <laughs> He's as a long as, Yeah, exactly. As long as you stay strong and courageous and remind everyone of the, uh, of the laws that I laid down in Deuteronomy, uh, like make sure you tell them that all the time, <laughs> I'll never turn my back on you. It's just me and you, baby. <laughs> and as long as you don't let anything to the left or right distract you from my rules, no one will be able to tear us down. Can't tear down what we got. You're my Joshua. Uh. So Joshua tells his officers to go around telling people to pack their shit up because in three days they're going to go, they're going to go across the cross over the Jordan river and finally take what God has been promising them this whole time. Mm. Then Joshua 
looks at the Reubenites and is all like, you guys need to make sure you're all ready to take possession of the land of God, that uh, the, the land that God's giving us, and you're only allowed to rest when God says it's okay. So the Israelites are like, we got you, Joshua. We'll, we'll take whatever, we will take whatever you want us to, and we'll kill anyone who has a problem with that. We'll be strong and courageous for you, Joshua. I got you, boo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because so, it's a new role. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's stepping into he's some getting, big shoes. He's getting proper support. That's mm-hmm. good. That's good. So Joshua now decides to send a couple of spies to look at the land they're about to take. Joshua tells the spies to especially look at what's happening in the land of Jericho. Mm-hmm. But somehow word got back to the king of Jericho that the spies were hiding in the home of a prostitute named Rahab. Okay, uh, Joshua. <laughs> They're not hiding in her home. <laughs> They're getting their freak on a little bit. Yeah. I'm just saying. And that bad. They're not very good spies. <laughs> So the king sends uh, a couple of messages, messengers to Rahab's house, uh, letting her know that the two guys she has in her home are spies and that, that, and that she should bring them out uh, so that they can be captured. So Rahab is all like, uh, oh, yeah, those guys, they were here, but uh, they, they just left and they headed towards the city gates just before they closed. And uh, you can probably catch up to them if you go right now. So, but she was actually secretly hiding them on her roof. Mm. So the messenger, the messengers left right away and the city gates locked down like behind them. Mm -mm. So Rahab goes to see the spies on her roof before they, uh, before they fall asleep. And she's all like, listen guys, everybody in the city is shook from uh, the stories we keep hearing about the Israelites. Uh, You have to promise that, uh, that if I help you, that God won't kill my family. So the spies are like, as long as you don't snitch, you won't get stitches. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you won't get stitches. <laughs> so it turns out that uh, Rahab lived right along uh, the city wall and uh, tells the spies to climb down the outside of the city wall and to hide in the hills just outside the city until the messengers come back from trying to, to find them. So the spies tell Rahab that if anyone finds them while they're hiding, that uh, they'll, they'll, they'll wind up killing them and that their arrangement with uh, Rahab is going to be null and void. So, yeah, there's just no protection offered if they get discovered. Oh, no. Right. Where so, was emails? <laughs> so, right? <laughs> Where was instant messaging? So Rahab tells them uh, that she'll tie, like, a red ribbon around uh, uh, in the window until the messengers come back. So she's telling the spies just to look, look for at that the window. Red ribbon. Yeah, and if you see the ribbon is there, that means the spies are still looking for you. Or the messengers are still looking for the spies. Okay. Uh, let's see here. And, uh, uh, so, and, and it would be, as soon as the ribbon is off, it'll be safe to go back to Joshua and to, without being pursued. Okay. So after this all shakes down, the spies go back to tell Joshua that the entire city is shook about the Israelites. They, they are aware that we're coming. Mm -hmm. Mm. So stay tuned next week Mm. to find out what happens. Joshua needs to send new spies. <laughs> Some better spies. Some yeah. spies that don't like hanging out with hookers. Yeah, like ninja spies. <laughs> yes. He needs to go to wherever ninjas are at back then. That's right, Shirley. And have them there. So what do we need people to do, Shirley? Well, they need to do like Joshua's spies. Mm-hmm. And uh, pretty much just, I don't know, you know, pass the plate. And donate. And donate. Pass the plate. Pass the plate. And donate. Pass the plate. And donate. And donate. Pass the plate. And donate. We learned about the book of Joshua. Mm-hmm. He's got a really new role. He but likes he- hanging out with hookers. And his wise needs to train. Pass the plate. And donate. Pass the plate. Mm-hmm. And donate. <laughs> Go to Chodilla.com and head on over to Patreon to support what we do. That's at Chodilla.com and click on Become a Patreon or donate your account. Donate your account.com forward slash Chonilla to keep us going and grow socially. You know what I'm saying? And over and over. Spread the word, everybody. Spread the love. The Chonilla love, that is. Right? 
Yes. Fast Fleet. And Nate. <laughs> Fast Fleet. And Nate. Say you're, say you're Christina Aguilera. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. Do, do, do. Love that part. <laughs> no one find a keyboard and try to practice doing that. I got some feedback. All right. Mm-hmm. It's from Charles. Oh. Yes. Oh, thank you. You reminded me of something. Gotcha. Okay. You're welcome. Yeah. So Charles writes, Charles the Spy writes, love the show and the resolution of your issues. Oh, that'll be ongoing. <laughs> Sometimes life will test you to see if you both have the metal to endure. Mm. A good woman will love you even when you are down because they have faith in you. I always do. Mm -hmm. And he likes the job offers that are coming in, even if they are not practical. It's like the world is flirting with you and telling you how sexy you are. (laughs) I love that. (laughs) That part. (laughs) And he wrote, wink. Uh, Yes, Sunday makes sense. Oh, and fucking Amber P's voice is a snake charmer. (laughs) Oh, my God. He said he had to wax one out after the intro. Oh LOL. Uh, keep that one. It's a real wiener plumper. I agree. <laughs> Definitely. Thank you very much, Amber, for hooking that up. And uh, yes, Charles, thank you very much for the feedback. Thank I you, agree. Charles. 100, 150%. So much. I wanted to also say, because you re- when you said thank you, I want to say thank you to, uh, after that episode, there's been a few people that's reached out to say, not only to say, welcome back. Thank you so much for that. Uh, we appreciate it, all the messages, but uh, also the messages of like, hey, you know what? I've been there or I'm there at I'm I'm at the same spot as you guys and it was nice to hear you know oh, like it yeah, was man. it was nice to hear like okay it's not sometimes when you hear somebody me go too. through it right same z's me too right. same z's yes exactly it, it it's kind of like ah oh, it's yes. relieving at times to yes. kind of like oh it's not just me cuz you feel like you're taking crazy pills when all that's going on yeah. there's so much stress you're like is this for real yeah yeah so thank you for the reach out thank you for saying welcome back thank you for for let us letting us know that that you know relating to some of the things that we've shared as well. So mm-hmm. Pudding Pop says that some awesomeness right there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right there. Yeah, right there. <laughs> I love American accents. Uh, I do have a countdown. Yes. Well, it's more like a. Oh my God, Shirley! Can we take a break before we do this countdown? Okay. Yes. That would be perfect. Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna. We have a mobile. Uh, uh, fixer upper for the car guy that's supposed to come, so I'm gonna find out what's going on with that in a moment. Hey guys, we really hope you enjoy listening to the Chonilla podcast as much as we love making it for you. But the reality is, the lion's share of our time is dedicated to our day job, so we can cover all our costs of maintaining the podcast. We've hardly reached our full potential. The good news is, we can work together to change this. With the help of Patreon.com's crowdfunding, you can become an active contributor to our crowdfunding initiative. Let us know that our ongoing milestones for the Chonilla Network mean as much to you as they do to us. Oh, Flava Flav. Right? So I remember there was something I wanted to play. Ah, jeez. All right. Go ahead, Shirley. Keep going. So it's not really a countdown. It's more like uh, education. It was kind of weird I ran into it because you were telling me, uh, hey, you know what, Shirley? Eggs, you don't need to put it in the fridge. I was like, what are you talking about? Of course I have to put it in the fridge. You were saying right. how <laughs> for story. Like you don't yeah. need to store the eggs in the fridge. But then when we we're looking into it, some of the stuff I saw was like farm eggs. For example, fresh out of the farm, those could be on the counter. Uh, But my fear is I don't want any chickens cracking open the things. But you're saying how those eggs don't have. They're not fertilized. They're not fertilized. None of those eggs you get in the carton are fertilized (sighs) yet. But I I know one time I opened an egg and I saw a fetus. Then then that was fertilized. Okay. Like it was like. Well, they have, I think, like a screening process where they can. um, Oh, like. It's light, you know. It passes through it, and they can see if it's been fertilized. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. So, so I thought this would be interesting. Uh, where is? Oh shoot, I just had it open, man. 
It was a picture. <laughs> Come on. You can... There we go. So apples, for example. Mm-hmm. Come on, open. <laughs> so apples, for example. So apple, you have to, 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 you could store it in the refrigerator drawer for three weeks unwrapped. Mm -hmm. um, bananas, you could have it on the countertop unwrapped for three days mm -hmm. once ripe. ripe. Uh, berries, uh, that one uh, refrigerator drawer uncovered, vented in a vented container for three to five days. Uh, uh, Wait, say that. Say that again. You can put eggs. No, not I'm eggs. Not this is eggs. berries, like okay, strawberries, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. that kind of thing. Gotcha. Um, citrus, you could have in the refrigerator shelf, unwrapped for two weeks. Oh wow! Uh, this one was interesting. Um, melon, when it's like not cut, it could be on a countertop, unwrapped for five days. What? Oh, like on just a, a full melon. The full yeah, melon. Yeah. Okay. But once it's cut in half. Then you can refrigerate it in the shelf wrapped in a plastic for seven to 10 days. Right. Um, grapes in a refrigerator drawer uh, with the plastic bag uh, for one to two weeks. Okay. Uh, what is that? Sorry, sweetie. Go ahead. Broccoli, a refrigerator drawer wrapped in plastic for five days. Mm -hmm. uh, this one... I've had mixed. Some people say take it, take uh, take it off the wrap. Some people said leave the wrap. The cucumbers in a wrap. Mm -hmm. So that's ref refrigerator drawer for one week. Mm -hmm. But some people have left it uh, without the wrap. I don't know. Uh, where's the eggs? Oh, and the eggs. <laughs> refrigerator shelf in the egg carton for two weeks or until the expiry, the expiration date on the carton. So, so you're you supposed to keep it in the fridge. Really? Yes. So you can't keep it out in the open. Nope. But everybody in Europe doesn't refrigerate their eggs. Oh. They keep them like room temperature. Oh. I wow. have no idea. Anyways, so I wanted to follow up on that Public Enemy song. Yeah. Because I remember the first time I heard Fear of a Black Planet. Mm -hmm. in my headphones and i heard like there was a track i can't remember what the track was called i've been trying to find it while you've been talking mm -hmm. is where they had like chuck d and flavor flav in separate like head like on left and right tracks i think you're right do you remember that yeah there was one song and, and it blew my mind it blew my mind I think you're right yeah i was like what is going on here it's like they're they're, they're beside me i don't understand what's going on Carolyn, we <laughs> yeah, need your help right. <laughs> So anyways, I was trying to find that song to to play it cuz uh that that was the that was when I was listening to that album was like definitely sold it for me that like the innovation that these guys were doing with uh with <laughs> That was innovation back then. <laughs> sure. What do you mean? No, but it was it's not just like okay, let's put us on separate tracks. It was there was actually a discussion going on between them and you were you were You in felt like that. in the middle of it. Yeah. That's cool. That's what it was. It yeah. was a feeling of like being involved in that like back and forth. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm mm -hmm. Yeah. So maybe we'll have to go to diggingdiscography.com, Miss Terrellyn. Mm, check, check out that her out. website. Mm -hmm. and, Put in uh, a request. Yeah, I'm going to email her mm -hmm. out of from her website. There you go. And say, <laughs> tell us, which song is it? Ah! All right, sweetie, what's going on? I think that's it. We're it? That's it? Yeah. Stupid freaking computer. <laughs> <sighs> Throwing me off and yeah. shit. Let's do that tonight. But we still did it. Let's Still do, did the show. Let's do that tonight. We'll look at the uh, Patreon milestones and make sure that they're all up to date and relevant. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, don't forget, go to donateyouraccount.com for real. Um, your your support. If you can't support through Patreon, one way that you can help support the show and help us grow socially is by heading to donateyouraccount.com. Um, uh, forward slash Tonilla. You could choose to do it daily, weekly, or monthly. You could choose if it's your Twitter, Facebook, or both. It's a great way, A, to we retweet, we retweet and share on your behalf. Uh, and it's a cool way to, to know when the latest episode has been posted. So you'll see it straight out of 
those two social media channels. Um, and again, and it's 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 it helps us grow so, right. socially on the internet. So donate your account dot com forward slash Chonilla if you're unable to do it. The Patreon if you're unable to support, support the show through Patreon. Uh, thank- Shout out to Charles and everybody in the Facebook group that's been uh, keeping us up to date with the interwebs. Yes. Um, I actually did forget to mention one thing that uh, Lashana last time. Yeah. Uh, she wanted us to uh, speak on the, um, oh, da- the Dallas the shooting. Oh, the Dallas shooting. Right. I and saw the video. That was oh, a trip. Oh, my God, Shirley. What was that about? It was, I don't know, but it was like the the, the video, the, the the car, like this SUV slammed into a cop car. The cops jumped out. No, it looked like not a, a cop car. By the headquarters of a police station. But he hit a cop car. And the it looked like a scene out of GTA. Yes, and it, yes! And it sounded... Like the escape from uh, the escape uh, sequence from Heat. Do you remember when they're coming out of the, the, oh, the bank? Oh, I love that part. Oh my god. So, but that was that was um, just the gunfire. Like the amount of rounds that were fired was was Insane. off the chain. I was like, this is I'm, I'm I'm watching I'm watching the Wild West here. Yeah. Yeah, it was, but that was a perfect... This is a shootout at the OK Corral right now. Those two things you just said, GTA and that scene from Heat, Yeah. the combo of... Yeah, that's exactly what it, what it sounded like, looked like, yeah. There's some serious, serious street violence. It's scary. In, in uh, North America, and it's crazy. Ah, uh, yeah. No one Anyways, And no one was hurt. Bananas. No one was hurt. That's good. I want to say, oh, you can check us out on Rip Radio every Monday from noon to 2 p.m. or 3 p.m., depending the length of the show. Uh, you can catch us on Roku. We're definitely going to uh, update Roku with the three latest episodes, so you can listen on your Roku. <laughs> um, uh, you can hear us on Radio La Salle. That's- you, know when it's, there's, you, know, you know what's a good time to listen? What? It's when you're packing, when you're getting ready to move. Right, Leslie? <laughs> yes. Or when you're unpacking, right, Drew? <laughs> yeah. Or when you're driving to work. Yeah, anytime. Or when you're in the subway. Well, maybe not the subway, but anytime on you the feel, train. You feel like hanging out with some cool people. Yeah. Like myself and Shirley. While you're cooking. Mm. But make sure the children are not around. Yes. It is. <laughs> but for doing grown-ups. any of those things. <laughs> yes. And even at work. You can even listen at work, but make sure you have some headset on. Yes. Because, yeah. Uh, you can hear us every Thursday now. We're no longer on... on. You mean Sundays. No, I'm talking about Gatio La Salle. Gotcha. You can, uh, we're no longer on Tuesdays. We're on Thursdays, 10 p.m. to midnight on 100.1 FM. That's uh, on CKVL. iHeartRadio. You can catch us on iHeartRadio, Spreaker. Again, email us, feedback at chonilla.com. Give us a call toll-free anytime. Leave a message anytime. We love it. We love to hear from you just as much as you love to hear from us. But we love even more to hear from you. Mm. And the best ones will be played on the show. Uh, that's one eight four four chonilla That's one eight four four two four six six four five five. Uh, Google Chonilla. That's the easiest way to find us on anything. C H O N I L L A. Find us on everything. And thank you to the No Limit Soldiers. Yes. Uh, we who we got? Who we got? We got. I know Evo's there. Evo's I know there. Charles is there. Yeah. James Puddin' Pop is there, and Lala G. Thank you so much for hanging out. The No Limit on Soldiers. This Sunday afternoon, and catch us every Sunday. Mm-hmm. We'll try to be here at eleven a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Just running into technical difficulties. Yeah, it that fucking sucked. Yeah, but I'm glad the she's she's back. She's mm-hmm. she's a little slow, but she's back. What's the quote of the show? Before I get into the quote, I wanted to extend a, um, I guess, an RIP to the victims yes. of Charleston, South Carolina. Of Charleston, nine. Yeah, our hearts, our hearts go out to uh, the families that have suffered from this tragedy. Yes. Um, and the quote is: Any unarmed people are slaves, or are subject to slavery at any given moment. And that was by Huey P. Newton. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's uh, very fitting. Yes. With what happened. Yes. All right, everybody. Take care. And we will hang out again next Sunday. Next Sunday. Sunday morning. 11 a.m. Peace. Peace out, y'all. 
Chonilla.com is now on Stitcher. Listen to us on your iPhone, Android phone, BlackBerry, and free. Stitcher is smart radio for your phone. Go to Stitcher.com and download it for free today. Oh, yeah. And we'd really appreciate a thumbs up. We got some Bible scriptures today, Shirley. Wow! Getting into the book of Joshua. Woo-wee! <laughs> Evo says he watched uh, Exodus. <laughs> Gods and Kings. That's the one with uh, Christian Bale, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he said the movie was so much trash. Really? <laughs> yeah. This is the I one with Moses, right? Is this about Moses? Yes. Yeah, because we did not. Yes. Mo- oh, with the whole, yeah, 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 the, yeah, the battle. Ru- the one with Russell Crowe was about... Um, Noah. Noah, that's yeah. right. Shalom, on, everybody. Happy Sunday. What it's book? Father's Day. Yes. What book are we doing again? Joshua? Joshua. I can't, I can't do, do nothing, nothing for you, man. man. I can't do nothing for you, man. Just the way the ball bounces, Chief. The rapping Bible, making his word crash again. Genesis, Exodus, Deuteronomy. Go to Chalala.com.